That's George Aylett from the Labour Basic Income Group. Um, George, somebody's just tweeted, basic income is communism. <laughs> well, the thing is, the ironic thing about that is, is that its uh, roots go back to libertarianism. You know, even the Adam Smith Institute back a form of basic income. The idea that it's a communist... Uh, you know, you'll get a communist paradise from you know, the sort of basic income is, is nonsense. I think the thing about basic income is that it cross, crosses many party lines. And I think people who are against the idea of basic income, they need to look at the long-term future regarding automation. Now, automation is going to be you know, a big challenge for humanity in the future. We're going to have self-driving cars in the future, which will replace many transportation jobs. And as AI specialises, uh, it's going to replace more and more jobs. So what do you do when you have an economy which is largely taken by automation Then you just got people who have no income? So well, that, that's, that's a very old-fashioned argument. I remember hearing that argument back in the late 70s when computerization was about to happen and we were told that nobody would, would have a job after that. And yet, actually, technology has increased employment in this country massively and AI could do the same. That may have been the situation in the past. So the first, second and third industrial revolutions, they helped human labour. But the fourth industrial revolution is different. It is going to replace human labour. We're already seeing that, like I just said, with self-driving cars. And I don't think we really are prepared for what is about to come. Um, you know, those arguments may have been used in the past, but the thing is, historically, as we have seen, it has helped human labour. The next wave really will be different. We're seeing that with even with baristas. We've got a a robot called Baxter, which is doing uh, uh, the job which many low-school jobs could be doing, and uh, that's very affordable. I believe it's around twenty-three, pounds £26,000 for one of those automatons, and it can perform very simple tasks. But now, I, I, are you seriously things, suggesting that people whose jobs go because of automation uh, could exist on £48 a week? Uh, no. Uh, I think it depends about which model you do. So that is one model which has been... Uh, suggested, and I think I could work for the here and now, but for the long term future, of course, I think you need to look at other models right now. So that's what I think we should try with the policy now. It depends. Uh, I believe that the universal basic income will become absolutely necessary in the future. So we need to work out the how it works now and how to implement it now so we can prepare for the long-term future. And it'll be interesting to see what your other guest has to say about that. But wh where it has been trialled, in Finland and Canada, it hasn't really worked, has it? Well, it's only been trialled for a year in Finland, and what we saw from the results in the Finnish trial was that... Uh, you a, know, a no two-year two trial. Well, yes, that's the thing. It is a two-year trial, but this we've only had a one year of the trial being implemented, and then we've only got the feedback from the first year. We've seen high productivity, we've seen high happiness... And it didn't have an impact on, uh, you know, it, might have, it didn't have a negative impact on employment. So, again, so why I hasn't Finland extended it then? Well, because of politics in the country, isn't it? I think we need to wait for the long-term results. And I think we need to test it here in the United Kingdom. We are a different economy from Finland. And I think we do, at, at the very least, need to try it here. Because if it's not going to work in the United Kingdom, I think you need evidence to show it doesn't work. And if it does work, it could modernise the welfare state. It could eliminate poverty in Britain. It could give help to uh, people starting up small businesses who do not have the safety net of workers' rights, for example. And it really could radically change Britain for the better and prepare it for the fourth wave of the Industrial Revolution. Um, so it's going to be very interesting. Let's so bring Christopher I mean, Snowden back into the argument. Christopher, we already mm -hmm. have a universal basic income for pensioners, don't we? It's called the state pension. Yeah, we have a universal basic income for, for everybody. Well, at least we have a basic income. It's, it, it varies according to your circumstances, but we have a safety net that, that, that differs according to who you are. Um, I don't agree at all with the idea that the fourth industrial revolution is going to wipe out jobs. This is just classic Luddite thinking. It's never been correct in the past. We have record employment despite increasing um, use of robots um, and so on. And I don't accept the idea that we need to, well, what, that we would be testing it if we gave everybody £48. I think the experiments from other countries have not been particularly impressive. I think you're right, that's why they haven't been continued. It's why the Swiss rejected a universal basic income in a referendum not so long ago. But giving everyone £48 doesn't test it. 
It's not a universal basic income. It's not, you can't live off it. It doesn't really tell you anything whatsoever. I still think it should be something that we look into. I still think that it would be quite nice if we could abolish the uh, hugely complex welfare state. We could scrap state schools and we can get rid of the NHS and let everybody have enough money so that they can make their own consumption decisions. But I don't think there actually is enough money in the kitty, despite the enormous amount of uh, tax that the government takes out of us, there still isn't enough money in the kitty for it to make financial sense. Would you be in Mm favour of doing what Guy Standing suggests and scrapping these 1,156 tax reliefs? Quite possibly. I'm certainly in favour of simplifying the tax and benefits system, and I'm obviously not familiar with every last one of those uh, tax reliefs, but it does show you how uh, incredibly you know, how incredibly complicated the entire thing has become over time. It, sh- it certainly doesn't need to be that complicated. So from that point of view, I'm in favour of any kind of reform that makes things simpler. Uh, but I don't know where this £48 pounds has come from. I think that if you're committed to a universal basic income, you, could, you should say what you think people can live on, and that clearly would be many times more than £48 pounds a week. And if you want to put a proposal out for that to be tried, go ahead. But I'm not sure the sums work out. Well, I think the £48 pounds is um, the amount that we would lose on the personal tax uh, relief. That, George, Ayla, I think that's right, isn't it? Uh, again, uh, the report has only been published very recently, and it all depends on which uh, model you're looking at. So they suggested £100 a week with uh, child benefit as well, or replacing the personal tax allowance with £48 pound a week. But it's uh, just something I want to raise as well, and uh, something that goes back to the point made by the last guest, actually, is, you know, we talk about the idea of the universal basic income being an expensive project, but I'll tell you what else is expensive in the United Kingdom. Poverty. Poverty is massively expensive uh, in the terms of lost productivity, from ill health. I mean, your, your guest wants to scrap the NHS. What would that do for productivity in the United Kingdom as well? I think the idea... I think you've got to look at basic income as a policy that is going to even the playing field, it's going to increase productivity, increase happiness, and uh, basically make the country uh, more fairer, more equal, more sustainable, and uh, fit to grow for the future, because it provides that even playing field for everybody, and that's the whole point about universalism. We've seen okay. the universalism work in healthcare, why can't it work for welfare as well? All right, George, thank you. That's George Aylett and Christopher Snowden there. We'll come to your calls in a moment. Do you-